Let's do an example. Locate all the instant centers in the mechanism shown. If link 2 is turning clockwise at the rate of 60 radians a second, determine the linear velocity of point C using instant centers. The lengths of the links are given. Since we are using the graphical method, we will draw the linkage to scale. Now we look at the linkage to see how many links there are. In this linkage there are four links. Links 2, 3 and 4 are labelled in the picture. Link 1 is the base link or frame which connects the supporting pin at D and A. Now we will draw a circle of arbitrary radius. Now that we know how many links there are, we can place four tick marks at approximately equal locations around the circle, one for each link. Now it is time to calculate how many instant centers we need to find, using the formula n multiplied by n minus 1 divided by 2, we find the number of instant centers to be 4 multiplied by 4 minus 1 divided by 2 equals 6. There are 6 instant centers. We inspect the linkage. We can see that at D, link 4 connects to the frame. The pin is fixed to the frame and therefore there is zero velocity at D. We have found an instant center. We label it with I14 to represent the location of the instant center. Going back to the circle diagram, we can draw a line between 1 and 4 to represent this instant center. We inspect the linkage. We can see that at A, Link 2 connects to the frame. The pin is fixed to the frame and therefore there is zero velocity at A. We have found an instant center. We label it with I12 to represent the location of the instant center. Going back to the circle diagram, we can draw a line between 1 and 2 to represent this instant center. We inspect the linkage. We can see that at C, link 4 connects to body 3. The pin fixes body 4 to body 3 and therefore the bodies have zero relative velocity at this point. We have found an instant center. We label it with I43 to represent the location of the instant center. Going back to the circle diagram, we can draw a line between 3 and 4 to represent this instant center. We inspect the linkage. We can see that at B, link 3 connects to body 2. The pin fixes body 2 to body 3, and therefore the bodies have zero relative velocity at this point. We have found an instant center. We label it with I23 to represent the location of the instant center. Looking back to the circle diagram, we can draw a line between 2 and 3 to represent this instant center. Going back to the circle diagram, we see that we cannot find any more instant centers by inspection. We now know the location of four instant centers, and we have to find two more. We do this by construction. To construct the next center, we go back to the circle diagram. We look at the lines that have been drawn. We want to draw a line that will complete two unfinished triangles. Two such lines exist. Let us consider one of them. By drawing a line from tick mark 1 to tick mark 3, two triangles are formed, and this line finishes two incomplete triangles. The first triangle is made of the line between tick mark 1 and tick mark 4, and the line between tick mark 4 and tick mark 3. The second triangle is made of the line between tick mark 1 and tick mark 2 and the line between tick mark 2 and tick mark 3. The line between tick mark 1 and tick mark 3 represents the instant center I13. To draw the location of the instant center, we go back to the linkage. We extend the line between I14 and I43. This is represented by one unfinished triangle in the circle diagram. We extend the line between I12 and I23. This is represented by the other unfinished triangle in the circle diagram. 
The instant center of these two lines denotes the instant center I13. To construct the last center, we go back to the circle diagram. We look at the lines that have been drawn. We want to draw a line that will complete two unfinished triangles. By drawing a line from tick mark 4 to tick mark 2, two triangles are formed, and this line finishes two incomplete triangles. The first triangle is made of the line between tick mark 4 and tick mark 1, and the line between tick mark 1 and tick mark 2. The second triangle is made of the line between tick mark 4 and tick mark 3, and the line between tick mark 3 and tick mark 2. The line between tick mark 4 and tick mark 2 represents the instant center I42. To draw the location of the instant center, we go back to the linkage. We extend the line between I41 and I12. This is represented by one unfinished triangle in the circle diagram. We extend the line between I43 and I32. This is represented by the other unfinished triangle in the circle diagram. The intersection of these two lines denotes the instant center I42. We can see that body 3 rotates around I13, body 2 rotates around I12, and body 4 rotates around I14. At I43, the velocity between body 4 and 3 is the same. At I23, the velocity between body 2 and 3 is the same. At I42, the velocity between body 4 and 2 is the same. We use the idea of a theoretical extension of the bodies to understand how the velocities may be the same at these positions. We have now found all the instant centers. We can concentrate on the next part of the question. If link 2 is turning clockwise at a rate of 60 radians a second, determine the linear velocity of point C using instant centers. We don't have to use all the instant centers to solve the problem. The only instant centers that we need relate to the input that we are given and the output that we need to find. The input is the angular velocity of link 2 and the output is the linear velocity of point C. It must be recognized that point C is on link 3. Therefore, the problem only involves link 2 and link 3. To solve the problem, we must find the instant center that gives information about link 2 and link 3. This center is I23, and it is the location where the velocity on link 2 is equal to the velocity on link 3. We have used the idea of a theoretical extension of the bodies to understand how the velocities may be the same at this position. Let us use the relative velocity formula to describe the velocity at I23. We may first consider I23 to be on body 2. Body 2 rotates around I12. Then the velocity of I23 equals the velocity of I12 plus the velocity of I23 with respect to I12. Then the velocity of I23 equals the velocity of I12 plus the velocity of I23 with respect to I12. Since the velocity of I12 is zero because it is fixed to the frame, the velocity of I23 becomes equal to the velocity of I23 with respect to I12. Using a basic formula, the velocity of I23 becomes the angular velocity of link 2 multiplied by the distance between I23 and I12. The question gives the angular velocity of link 2 as 60 radians a second, and the distance between I23 and I12 is measured as 1.2 centimeters. Multiplying the velocity of I23 is 72 centimeters a second. Let us not forget that velocity is a vector and that it has a magnitude and a direction. To find the direction, we note that we used the distance with respect to I12. This is why we imagine that I12 is fixed and that I23 is moving. The question gives the angular velocity of link 2 as clockwise. This gives the velocity of I23 in a direction towards the right of the page. Given the definition of the cross product, we also know that the velocity vector is perpendicular to the distance vector. So the velocity is perpendicular to the line formed between I23 and I23. Now we consider the point I23 to belong to body 3. Let us use the relative velocity formula to describe the velocity at I23. Body 3 rotates around I13. Then the velocity of I23 equals the velocity of I13 plus the velocity of I23 with respect to I13. Since the velocity of I13 is zero because it is conceptually fixed to the frame, the velocity of I23 becomes equal to the velocity of I23 with respect to I13. 
Using a basic formula, the velocity of I23 becomes the angular velocity of link 3 multiplied by the distance between I23 and I13. We already know that the velocity of I23 is 72 cm a second. By solving for the angular velocity of link 3, we find that it is equal to the velocity of I23 divided by the distance between I23 and I13. By measuring this distance, we find that the angular velocity is 17.69 radians a second. We need to know the direction of the angular velocity. We know that link 3 is rotating about I13, and we also know that the velocity on I23, which may be thought of as on link 3, is going to the right. We look at the formula that we used and we see that we were considering the velocity with respect to I13. We fix this point and rotate body 3 in the general direction of the velocity at I23. From this motion, it is easy to understand that the angular velocity is in the counterclockwise direction. We can use the relative velocity formula to find the velocity at point C. The velocity at C equals the velocity at I13 plus the velocity of C with respect to I13. The velocity of I13 is zero because it is theoretically fixed to the frame. Using a basic formula becomes the angular velocity of link 3 multiplied by the distance between C and I13. To find the direction of point C, we consider the angular velocity of body 3. Body 3 rotates around I13 in an anticlockwise motion. Since C is on body 3, it has to follow this motion. This is why the velocity is heading towards the right of the page. Given the definition of the cross product, we also know that the velocity vector is perpendicular to the distance vector, so the velocity is perpendicular to the line formed between C and I13. The velocity at C equals 17.69 multiplied by 2.11, which equals 37.3 centimeters a second.